I've always wanted to be a journalist. No, I've never gotten an interview, but I believe it's because of my impediment. Many start to judge you, um, they underestimate you. You all should remember that tomorrow or next year, your family or you can end up sharing the same situation as I. His last words to Jasmine Dean. Only to come to school the Friday morning to hear that um, no one has heard from Jasmine. Jason who is blind and he'll be sharing with us his story and also hopefully encouraging us this video was taken from Jason's Instagram he's obviously doing some push-ups and life is like push-ups the more ups and downs you face the stronger you will get you been blind all your life yes I have been blind I was diagnosed as having glaucoma which for persons who don't know is actually cancer in the eye. Oh, and did you ever try to get treatment for it or it's not treatable? Well, it, it cannot be cured. However, I don't know what went into the doctor's heads when I was smaller, but they recommended a surgery and that took away the sight that I had in my right eye. That you have to be taking medication three times a day mm -hmm. because if you don't, the blood, the eye pressure will go up and burst the eye and that is what I cannot afford at the moment so I have to keep taking the eye drops to regulate the pressure. Right, how did you manage, manage as, a, as a child? It was difficult as a child however I had good guardians around me mm -hmm. so they knew that I should take my medication or eye drops three times per day so they would sometimes force me but as a child when you when you are doing things repetitively, it it then becomes a norm, so right. it never poses a problem after a while. Did being blind take away anything from your childhood experience? I don't know because I've never had sight before, so it's not it's not like I had sight and then lost it and then said, damn, being blind took away from me. I still enjoyed myself as a child. I had persons around me who were in a similar situation. Right. So that helped me in enjoying my childhood. What, in looking back on your early life, what were some of the challenges that you had as a blind child or, or as a blind young person? I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider myself having much challenges because I, we, well, I boarded at a blind school and that's Salvation Army. Salvation Army School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Right. So all the persons at that school were either blind or visually impaired. So everybody helped each other to adjust. So And we enjoyed ourselves just like the normal person would. It's just that we found innovative ways of doing such. Right. Uh, you, as you spoke about Salvation Army School for the Blind and Visually Impaired, there was this debate around what blind, blind or visually impaired people prefer to be called. So you have some people who want to be called visually impaired and some are who are okay with being blind. Is there a difference? Yes, there is a difference. So persons like me who are totally blind, we, we are blind. So there is not a problem to, to, to call me blind. Mm -hmm. But for a person who has some level of sight in one or both eyes, as those persons are visually impaired. Okay. So it would be best to call those persons visually impaired. So no, I'm not visually impaired, I'm blind. Okay, okay. So tell me now about how you manage with academics and all of that. You can talk to me first about your academic successes in your early years. Because I know you were and still are a very brilliant young man. Well, thank you very much for telling <laughs> me that I'm brilliant. But growing up, uh, I never had much problems with academics. I, to my formative years, formative years were spent at the Salvation Army School for the Blind, yeah. and so we were taught normally by the teachers. And then I went to high school, but that was a different kettle of fish because it was my first time interacting with persons who were sighted mm -hmm. um, of my of a similar age. 
But so at first it it was sort of a culture shock. However, as I got older, I began to cope better, and the stu and the students who were in my class, they they started to treat me better. Mm -hmm. So they, for example, they would read for me. They would dictate the notes for me. Yeah. Or the teachers would read or make special arrangements. So that is how I was able to cope academically. Were there any specific technology or software that you got that you used? Yes, I used the Braille, the Braille machine to take my notes while in high school. It's a special paper that you have and you put the paper inside the Braille machine mm -hmm. and then you type on the machine. Who taught uh, you how to read Braille? The different teachers at the Celebration Army School for the Oh, Braille so that's where you learned how to? Yeah, also. that's where all of us learn Braille. Okay, good. And then you matriculated to UA? Yes, I did. And you studied at Caramac? Yes, you I did. You studied Media and Communication because that's what it was called at the time? Yes, yes, Media and Communication. Why did you choose that? I've always wanted to be a journalist. Mm -hmm. um, as many persons would tell you, it started by me listening to the radio, listening to how persons would read the news. Mm -hmm. But then I realized that I wouldn't be able to read the news because of my impairment. So I would visualize myself doing such. And then I interacted with a few individuals who said that, look, you don't have to read the news totally read the news to be a journalist, but yeah. you can also write. Yeah. So I've always, um, that, that led me wanted to be a journalist even more. And that is why I went to Caramac. Have you ever practiced journalism though? Have you ever worked in a newsroom, a media house? I have limited experience of working within a newsroom. Mm -hmm. And not much, only the odd job here and there, the, the, the odd internship and writing articles for different individuals. Have you ever applied um, to work at the media house? Yes, I have. Yes, I have applied in the past. Have you reached the interview stage? No, I've never gotten an interview. Do you know why that is? No, but I believe, I may be wrong, but I believe it's because of my impediment. Many persons, when they find out that you're blind or visually impaired, they tend not want they tend not to want to take any chances mm -hmm. with us. So I'm not sure because the only way you can be sure is if they actually said it. Yeah. But that is just my gut feeling. Yeah. And do you have anything specific to say to those people who want to limit you or keep you in a box because you're blind? I would say to those persons, look we just want an opportunity to show you that we indeed can work and you all should remember that tomorrow or next year your your family or you can end up sharing the same situation as i so you have to remember that life is fluid and anything can happen right besides that are there any other challenges that you face generally as it relates to people being stereotyped, stereotypical towards you? Yeah, persons, yes, persons, as you said, they tend to stereotype you before, instead of asking you questions. Mm -hmm. they, they start to judge you, mm -hmm. um, they underestimate you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will discriminate against you. Mm -hmm. I must say, it, it is much, but it is much, it is not as bad as it was mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. and. And this is primarily due to public education, but there is still a lot of work that needs to be done in order for Jamaicans to accept us um, without any fear of trepidation. Yeah. So what is impressive to me is that you're a member of the West Indies cricket team for the blind. When did that start? How did you get involved? Uh, the Salvation Army School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. We, we, we've always, <laughs> we in our tiny minds at the time, we've, we always envision ourselves playing for the West Indies or persons who can play football would see themselves playing for Jamaica. So, uh, you know, within our limitations, we would improvise by using anything we could to play cricket. 
for example, removing the window blades from as well as getting bottles and putting stones in the bottles in order just to play. Mm. And in 2004, the, our dreams came through when the English came down and they introduced us to blind cricket. And from ever since, we've been playing cricket because we've always played some form of cricket at the school. So it wasn't very difficult for us to take to the sport. Do you still play? Yes, I, 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 I still play, but, as, but not as much as I once did a couple of years ago. Did you have any particular challenge playing on that cricket team, on the West Indies cricket team for the blind? I never had a challenge in terms of playing the sport, but what I found, well, what I found to be a challenge was the insularity that existed between the islands in the Caribbean. And I've always heard past cricketers, conventional cricketers, talking about it. But when you actually see it in front of your eyes, figuratively, mm -hmm. where it, not because you're blind doesn't mean that you, you would escape it. You know, it's very heart-wrenching. And I really hope that maybe in years to come, mm -hmm we can find a way to deal with it. I don't know if, if it can be totally eradicated, but if we work together, I'm sure we as a team can achieve more. Right. But in terms of playing the sport, I never had, I don't, I never had much challenge because I know the game. I know what is expected. Who is your favorite cricketer? I don't, I don't know if I have a favorite cricketer mm -hmm. now, but the closest one to that would be Steve Smith. And there was this Indian cricketer, um, captain as well, Saraf Gangoli. Okay, I don't know who those people are. As it relates to personal relationships, friendships, you don't have <coughs> eyesight to like mark faces and so, so how do you recognize people? Forest is, is my primary mode of recognizing individuals okay so voice and you communicate with people via whatsapp because i've been texting you on whatsapp so how does that work the phone that i that i have mm -hmm. the iphone it has a speech program on it mm -hmm. called voiceover it mm -hmm. allows me to type as well as it uh, allows you to type or you tell it what you want well you can you, you can tell it what you want to type but you can also type on it as well as there's WhatsApp web on the computer. So okay. I'm able to maneuver the computer okay. to type if I want. So it's nice to have okay. So uh, this is WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is to put your finger on any one of the icons and then it goes down. So if you go across, you'll see status or you see WhatsApp call. Mm -hmm. You'll see the different chats yeah. and then the settings. Mm -hmm. and then what you also can but how do you know because i don't hear the thing telling you where it's telling you but it's just speaking at a rapid rate oh but so you're hearing an understanding yes i'm hearing an okay, understanding okay that's cool and then you have the email mm -hmm. and they have different things the different apps yeah mm -hmm. so that is it that's so cool thank you i am cognizant of the fact that many of my friends had far more challenges than i did mm -hmm. and in in all that in all that I do, I have to give thanks because you know. Right. You know, I've, I've, do you think the you blindness know. um population gets enough assistance or support? It is way better than it was a couple of decades ago, mm -hmm. but not not because it's way better means it's perfect, right. and that is what we're striving for. It's gonna take. A monumental effort mm -hmm. to get it to what we want it to to be mm -hmm. but it's work in progress right. and it has to be all hands on deck right the case of jasmine dean do you have anything particular to say about that yeah it's very difficult to speak on the topic mm -hmm. because she she was or is a part of us mm -hmm. and poignantly today marks two months since she was last seen mm -hmm. entering a taxi. It's very difficult for all of us. Yeah. So we can just imagine what her family is going through. Mm -hmm. And we would just want to say 
anybody who has anything or anybody knows of her we're about to report it to the police mm -hmm. and it's actually the first time i've known somebody who just disappeared mm -hmm. i've always heard about it and i've never been complacent to think that it would have, it would never happen to me yeah. but you you when it when it hits home mm -hmm. you, you you understand really how it feels i remember vividly the last thing she said to me she said I, I should turn the AC off in one of the rooms mm -hmm. and because, That's in this building? Yeah, in, within this building mm -hmm. And because I was playing dominoes with somebody, I said yes, yes, yes So, you know, I, in hindsight, I should have maybe listened to what she was saying properly If I knew, if I knew this was what, if I knew this was going to happen But you just, you, you just could never know so you felt like you answered her out of well, annoyance? No, I wouldn't say annoyance. I just said yes, 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 because she was saying something to me and I, I thought I heard what she said. And because it, it, the game that I was involved in was a very intense one, I said yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And then she said, okay, tomorrow. Only to come to school the Friday morning to hear that um, no one has heard from Jasmine. So, um, him... Make you feel it, a yeah, way. Yeah, I felt, <laughs> I felt that way. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it's it's taking a toll on me but, no, I'm but sure don't I beat do. up yourself you know no one definitely and not. we're all still praying for her safe return we're still praying that justice is is served mm -hmm. i really i really hope she's alive somewhere but as the days pass mm -hmm. you know it feels as though hope is being lost yeah but you know they said everything will work out in the end so let's just pray and hope that the best will hear something soon what are some things that you can do that people don't think you could do? Like you said, Domino. How do you Dominoes. like identify the dominoes? They, they, they have the different holes. Oh, so them. you feel it? They feel the holes. Okay. Many persons don't believe blind persons can cook. What? You cook? Yes, I do cook. What's your favorite thing to cook? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I have a favorite meal to cook, mm -hmm. but I can help myself. Can you help yourself or you can cook? Well, I can cook. Okay, good. I can cook. Mm -hmm. I can I can take care of myself in terms of washing. Mm -hmm. I can iron. I can. You can iron. Yes, I can. So iron. how do you know when which part is crushed or? It's very difficult, especially for the dressing shirts. I would say that is a thing that I need some brushing up on, and even sighted persons would tell you that they. They find problems with, yeah, I don't like with the, press. pressing, uh, the dressing shirt. Have you ever like mistakenly put your hand on the hot part of the iron? Well, yes, and I guess maybe so. Certain persons would tell you that yeah. they have done it before, yeah. so it's not immune to me. Yeah, it doesn't happen often, but a small thing. A small thing. So besides that, what are some other things that you can do? I can peel my food. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah man, your banana. <laughs> yeah, Irish mm -hmm. potato. Mm -hmm. um, okay, like, so you spend uh, money, right? Like mm -hmm. physical money. How do you identify like a thousand dollar bill from a five hundred dollar bill? You know what? Many of my friends can identify the money, mm -hmm. the different money from, for example, the five hundred and the thousand dollars. <laughs> but I find it very difficult to identify mm -hmm. the different. So you feel like you are. Yes, I am at a disadvantage when it comes to that. However, I've n I have never been in a situation where I was robbed mm -hmm. by, say, a taxi driver or mm -hmm. a shopkeeper. Yeah. So I'm very happy for that. And well, I've completed the masters uh, uh, since 2017. Oh, so you're a masters holder. Well, <laughs> holder of a masters degree. <laughs> right. Right. And you are now a research assistant. Well, I'm no longer a research assistant. I'm. I'm currently job hunting. Oh, you're currently job hunting? Mm -hmm. And you sent out applications and so? Yes, What's I your see. interest? What jobs are you looking for? Ideally, I would like to work in my specialized area, which is behavior change. Mm -hmm. But I am educated enough to know that you may not necessarily get what you want at right. the time. Mm -hmm. Just taking something and making the, the most of it yeah. until you get what you want really want okay sometimes we see blind people walking or visual impaired people and we are you know just you just feel the need to help them to assist them is that okay 
Yeah, it, it is okay, however, uh, many blind persons, including myself, they don't like to be pulled around. So, for example, if you're going to help somebody, you just don't grab them around the place like that. What's uh, the best way to approach it? Well, you can say, sir, miss, can I, am I, can I help you? Or oh. let them know what is in your way and ask them if they need help. Okay. Or sometimes I would be on the road and somebody would assume that I need them help and just pull me. Yeah, you I don't don't know, like no, no, but nobody likes it. Yeah, I guess. So I would, uh, I would ask persons to just desist from doing it, or do it gently, mm -hmm. or just communicate to them what is happening. What advice do you have to give to blind people? That's the first one, and just people in general in dealing with blind people. For persons who are blind, you just keep it, keep your chin up. I know that not because you don't succeed at something initially means the end of the world now it's like the game of dominoes you may draw a bad hand and still end up winning the game yeah, that's um, so sweet. and for persons who are blind we all we want is for you to treat us with respect mm -hmm. and dignity right and we we don't want any handout nor any pity mm -hmm. we just want to be considered as part of society we just want an opportunity to contribute and play our part in having having Jamaica achieve her vision 2030 goal of becoming the preferred place to live, grow, raise family and do business. Right, very good. Senator Floyd Morris, he is a very good example to the blind community. He is a role model, I would assume, to many of you. Would you consider him as such? Is there any particular aspect of his life that you like to emulate? He has been a role model for many of us. He becoming the first blind person to be the president of the Senate, to be the first blind person to enter politics in Jamaica. It's no mean feat and it, it must be celebrated. And I'm sure his legacy will live on and many blind persons who chose to venture down that line would look at his achievement and say if he can do it i can do it what is the first thing on your wish list and why is it not gaining sight the first thing on the wish list is to be comfortable in that financially and emotionally mm -hmm. and my reason for not putting sight as being the first thing on the wish list, I've been without sight for practically all my life. Right. That is not to say if, if, if it were offered to me, mm -hmm. I would take it. However, my rationale for putting it way down is that you, you can gain your sight, you can get back your sight and still be in a disadvantageous position in that you still can be poor. However, if if I were to get a job and be able to take care of my family and live comfortable, mm -hmm. I would trade that. I would trade that for no sight at all. And where do you see yourself in five years? It's very difficult to say mm -hmm. because I've been, I've been, I've been constantly reviewing my life metric mm -hmm. so i wouldn't want to tell you where i would see myself in five years because mm -hmm. maybe five years from now when i listen back to you to this interview i would say boy um what uh, was i thinking yeah, what was i thinking <laughs> so what i i i really would like to get a move on in life uh, I, I i tend not to set time limits on things because when you find the, the time approaching it can be very devastating, especially if, if you've not achieved everything you set out to do. Thank you so much. So there you have it, this interview with Jason, a blind young man who holds a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Mass Communication and a Master's of Arts degree in Communications for Social and Behavioral Change. He is an inspiration to me and I'm sure his story today will, or I hope his story today will inspire you especially people in the blind community to see your greatness and don't be limited by your blindness or the idea or the fact that you are visually impaired but to push and to continue to live extraordinary thank you so much for watching now jason i want you to tell to subscribe to this youtube channel and to like and share this video
everybody out there who is watching or who will watch this video yes. you can like yes. share mm -hmm. and subscribe to this channel thank and you give us your comments and give us your comments feedbacks. feedbacks thank you so much thank you jason